Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in Westfield, New Jersey, and I'm going to be ripping out some old knob and tube wiring in this garage and replacing it with either armored MC cable, or as you just say, MC cable, uh, and or some half inch EMT conduit. There's a couple of overhead garage door openers, some lights, and some convenience receptacles. And the, the supply from the basement uh, out to the garage is underground. I don't really see where underground it is or where it comes into the building, but I know where it terminates in the building and where it leaves from the house, which I'll show you momentarily. Uh, welcome back to the channel and um, let's get to it. First thing you have to do is get all the stuff out of your way so you can put down your ladders and that's what we did here. So we just have to twist the fuse. My question is, is, is this 120 volts or is this 240 volts? Not much voltage drive. I thought I had more. It's 120 volts and I have a ground. When I went from neutral to ground. Oh, maybe I do. Oh, there we go. So I do have it. So we are good. So the next thing we want to do is I want to go down to the basement and just disconnect this real quick so I'm not working with it live. So let's go check that out. Okay, so all I'm looking to do here is just disconnect the conductor that's going through that conduit at the bottom of the box. That's what's actually feeding through the foundation underneath the driveway and then outside to the garage. And so I don't exactly see where it comes into the garage because it's all boarded up, but obviously it goes underneath and uh, the wiring was intact. I had 120 volts to ground. I had a good neutral and I had a good neutral to ground continuity. I had hot to neutral 120 volts so i was good to go here so i just came down to the basement and uh just disconnected this junction box uh before going back out there and to start my wiring and then i'm just checking to make sure it's dead again to ground and we're good to go i really would like to replace this uh, feeder or this branch circuit out to the garage uh, but it's just not in the cards to break up the driveway. I did I did advise the homeowner that if you do redo the uh, driveway at some point, that would be the time to do this and update this because it probably is 60 or 70 years old. So the supply going out there had the conductors, but the wiring in the garage was old knob and tube. So apparently it had been replaced once already. So uh, this would be the second time if we decide to uh, upgrade later on. So I'm just going to leave the blank plate like that and come back later. So obviously it's a good idea just to double check that that was the circuit, even though you're pretty sure that's what it is. And it was. So now I'm ready to move forward with the rest of the wiring project, which begins with coming out of this fuse disconnect here into a junction box right above it where the GFCI receptacle will provide GFCI protection for everything inside this garage. The way I found this fuse disconnect didn't surprise me, but there's actually two legs in there, one for the hot and one for the neutral, and there was a fuse for both of those legs, which doesn't make any sense to me. It was kind of common back in the day when the grounded neutral was actually the hot conductor before we decided that we should have a grounded conductor, um, a constant grounded conductor instead of a switched grounded conductor, which is what the overcurrent protective device would do, the, the, fuse, the Edison based fuse here. So I'm disconnecting the neutral and we're just going to supply a constant neutral to each one of the boxes here in this garage. The existing, I'm sorry, the new wiring that I'm going to be supplying will be protected by this fuse so there is a disconnect out here at the garage. This was the best angle I could get without standing in front of the camera so I apologize but you'll get a good look at it in a little while here. I thought maybe there would be a way to fish some armored cable right up here to the uh, attic space here, but it was awfully tight and uh, I'd already proposed that I would install half inch EMP conduit, but I did just want to take a look and see what was up there before I started. As you can 
see the old knob and tubes there. All right, so I think the idea is I'm going to come out of this disconnect box right here. We're going to leave this in place as it is with the fuse disconnect. There's nothing wrong with that. Come up here, we'll do a hole saw. We'll fish a wire, a piece of BX or a piece of Romex down into the disconnect box. We'll start our EMT run with a four inch square deep box up there. We'll run our conduit along the wall until we get to the area where the garage door opener receptacles are and where the lights are. And that's where we'll start our run. Everything's gonna be right along the surface in EMT. And then eventually we'll go down the wall out of the second garage door opener receptacle to the convenience receptacle there. And I think that'll be it. That's all we need to do. Boom. And I think what we're going to do too, since these receptacles nowadays have to be GFCI protected, maybe I'll put this, my start box a little bit lower right here. We'll come up and we'll 90 across before going up to the first garage door receptacle. This way we can have an accessible, readily accessible GFCI right here. Or we could just close this off permanently and just put a switch and a GFCI here. And that'll be the disconnect. And this will just be a junction box. Let me know in the comments what you think about that if we were to use this still. We're gonna leave the fuses in, I believe. All receptacles in the garage need to be GFCI protected. And the one important part of that particular code is that the GFCI itself, the test and reset button is in a readily accessible location. So in other words, you cannot put the GFCI on the receptacle for the garage door opener which is mounted to the ceiling because then you would have to get on the ladder of some sort just to go reset the gfci and that's not that does not meet the definition of readily accessible as defined by the national electric code so that's why we put the gfci in a readily accessible location we also could have put in this circuit on a gfci down in the basement or in the circuit breaker in the main breaker panel i chose to Put the gfci here for convenience if there's ever a problem you can hit the reset button right here in the garage without having to go find it somewhere else in the house so that was my design and build and uh, let me know what you think of that in the comments a bending conduit isn't difficult uh, i don't do it every day but i know just enough to get by i'm not an expert conduit bender by any means uh, but here I'm just putting in a little box offset. The box offset is so the conduit can reach the conduit knockout in the box. So you really just bend in this conduit in a tight, in a little offset, uh, just so you have enough room to come off the wall and into the knockout of the box. That's what I did, just did right there. Uh, and when working with half inch conduit, there's a uh, five inch of take up for every 90 degrees that you bend. So what that means is if you want to make your bend at 40 inches, okay, if it's 40 inches to where the pipe needs, where the conduit needs to be bent to, uh, then what you would do is you would measure the 40 inches and minus th five inches. So your mark would be at 35. And then you would bend your 90 degree at 35. And by the time the 90 degree bend was complete, you would be at the 40 inch mark. So that's what I'm doing here. So I don't know if 35 or 40 was my actual measurement, but it was something like that. Uh, just be careful to think about what you're doing here before you go to bend the conduit. And this is half inch EMT. Um, so just make sure you visualize the bend and bend uh, correctly. By far, one of my favorite things to use, the favorite tool to use when using the conduit here and bending conduit is the bandsaw. For years, I never used a bandsaw, and uh, I bought the Milwaukee M12 a couple years ago, and I just wonder why I waited so long to get the, um, the M12 bandsaw. I also have the M18 for bigger stuff, but to be honest with you, the M18, you need to use two hands uh, to start it and to control it. With the M12, you really could just do that thing one-handed, and uh, that makes bending and cutting 
and installing half inch EMT real simple. Set. Yeah, it's crooked. They haven't attached it yet. So I'm a little concerned about this little bump out here, that piece of wood. I don't know what that's from, the trim piece. I'm not overly concerned. Okay, now you see. Looks good, right? Boom. I think what we'll do is we'll secure that, and make sure that end is straight over there. And then I'm going to cut it, and this will be where my coupling will be. So I'll use the next piece. To do my 90 since my garage door open is gonna be right here I'm gonna to try to cover up that old hole that's there we'll come down got to figure out what this angle is here on the wall and then uh, we'll 90 and then we'll mark that condo where to cut it and that'll be that working by yourself is never easy and installing conduit by yourself can really be a challenge but I've learned some tricks over the years, and the good thing about half-inch EMT is it's very forgiving. So if you make too much of a bend, you're able to really just take that out almost by hand. So I do that a lot here. I say it all the time, but sometimes ripping out the old stuff is harder than putting in the new stuff. At this point, I was still under the impression that the supply came out of the ceiling, but as it turns out, the supply, the knob and tube supply for these receptacles that were put in later, actually come off the box on the wall that's all butchered up that you saw at the beginning of the video. And so now I'm trying to take this box off of the wood here without actually taking the receptacle out for time. And I uh, wasn't able to do that because I don't want to ruin the wood. It's not the nicest wood, but it is uniform and it's in pretty good condition. So you don't want to do any damage to it if you don't have to. Right. I know you wouldn't put a ceiling like, a, like this up now, or maybe you would. Uh, but this is what's there. And it's pretty unique to the house, obviously, and it's somebody else's property. And I look after it and make sure I don't do any damage that doesn't need to be done. But before I can start running the rest of my conduit, I need to take the old wiring down. And if you see that box on the wall to the right, there's actually a switch there for the LED lights in the soffit. And I didn't know that at the time. But in behind that box is where the knob and tube is supplied. And what they did was they tapped off the knob and tube there for the two garage door opener receptacles on the ceiling that I'm removing now. So I was a bit curious where the knob and tube entered over at the disconnect on the other side of the garage. I said to myself, well, it probably goes up to the receptacle for the garage door opener. Not thinking that they didn't have garage door openers when knob and tube was installed. So then I realized, well, I'm not sure where it is. So my next guess was probably in that old broken. That is actually a keyed porcelain light. So if you read the box, when you're buying these porcelain lights, it says keyless. That's a keyless version. This one's a keyed version. What we found out is that that knob and tube comes all the way over here to this receptacle, this box. Now, as you can see, they hacked up this old 1900. We're going to disconnect the wire coming from the back and we'll come into the top with a piece of conduit. I'll fix all this stuff up since this is controlling a couple of down lights in the soffit out here, which they definitely didn't have LED in 1909 when this house was wired but somebody installed these with non-metallic sheath cable the first time which is as you see right there you go over you have gotta use 12 wire but this is only a 15 amp circuit so that'll be okay and we'll put them on the new uh we'll reuse this looks like some kind of smart switch I'm not exactly sure what's going on there um, we might want to upgrade that to Caseta later on, but I'll ask her about that. So this is all going to come out right here. And we're going to redo this 
This is the control for something. I guess the garage door openers. So I'm just gonna plug it in the way it was before, but obviously that exposed electronic board right there, probably not good, but I'm not gonna clean that up because that has to do with the garage door openers. And these look like they're at least 30 or 40 years old. This one is new over here, but the, uh, the other one still working. So we're just gonna reconnect it as is. You can always find more work to do at somebody's house, but whether or not they ask you to do that is another story. So never do anything that you haven't been asked to do unless you uh, ask the person, look, I think you should upgrade this. Or, or if it's a life safety issue, then tell them, look, this needs to be upgraded because of this. But don't just do work just because you want to. So it's important that we put the new 1900 box over this so it looks aesthetically pleasing. Hey guys, welcome back. I got some of this work done, but my camera for some reason is getting hot. It is a hot day today, even though I'm out of the sun. So the GoPro 10 or 11, I got it, the GoPro 10 black, just uh, got overheated and it shut down, so I couldn't record. I got more cameras, but this is the only camera I have with me today. So what I ended up getting done, I think it left might have left off somewhere around here when I went from uh, box to box. I carried on, you might notice a coupling there what pipe the condo was too short anyway down the wall it's gonna be a junction box here and that piece of Romex that you see sticking out of there is actually going to those lights and then just a short nipple down here it's less than two feet and you can see it's behind the wall there but that's all you missed so uh
Everything's juice, yeah, protected. Get up. The reset button. Lights. Switch turns the lights on and off. It'll be a lot brighter at night. And the GFCI protects everything.
these outdoor lights, the coach lamp, these uh, soffit lights are in, the LEDs. This was a nice job. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.